Ali Baba and the Forty Thieves There was once a man called Ali Baba. He was a hard-working woodcutter who was happily married to his childhood sweetheart. He worked in the forests of northern Persia. Day after day, he would make an honest living chopping and collecting wood to be made into tables, chairs, doors, and even the odd fruit bowl. Kasim was Ali Baba's younger brother. Now, how do I say this without being mean? Let's just say that Kasim was more interested in money than people. Now, there's nothing wrong with money. It's what you do with it that counts. But Kasim loved it a little bit too much. For example, instead of marrying the girl he loved, he dumped her and went with a lady from a very rich family. Was he rich? Yes. But was he happy? Sadly not. Anyway, enough about Kasim. We'll get back to him later. One pleasant afternoon, as twilight began to dim the summer sky, Ali Baba was finishing up for the day when a gang of unsightly men, around 40 of them to be precise, walked by, boasting of how much money they had. Ali Baba did not usually take notice of this kind of showing off, but he couldn't help noticing their fine jewellery and clothes. What was really interesting was that they apparently had a cave nearby full of treasure. One look at these men and Ali Baba could tell they were thieves. He was sure that whatever treasure they had come into possession of was probably through dishonesty. One of the men was telling his friend about a magical password that would open the cave door. Do you know what it was? Yes, you guessed it, open sesame. Well, that got Ali Baba even more intrigued. A cave with a magical password full of golden riches? Wouldn't you want to take a peek? Well, as soon as the men were gone, Ali Baba hid his axe among the tall trees and trotted off in the direction they had come. He followed the footsteps in the dirt until he could follow them no more. Sure enough, they stopped dead at a huge boulder. This must be it, thought Ali. Now, what were the magic words again? Soap and messy me. No. Open sausagey? No, that's not it. Thankfully, the words popped right into his head. He smiled and said proudly, Open sesame! And the boulder in front of the cave began to rattle and shake before rolling to one side to reveal a dark entrance. Ali Baba was nervous. He took his first small step into the cave, his heart pounding in his chest. The further he walked, the darker it became, and he was starting to wish he'd never come when he saw a shard of tiny light way off in the distance at the end of a low, narrow tunnel. As he drew closer to the light, it grew brighter until he turned a corner and there before him was a huge cave lit by flickering oil lamps that contained the largest collection of gold and jewels he had ever seen. The place was enormous, big enough to fit ten elephants side by side and another ten on top he stood for a moment to try and take it all in. Being a sensible man and not greedy at all, Ali Baba didn't take more gold than he needed. Just enough for a new goat, to make some much-needed repairs on his roof and to buy his wife a nice gift. He spied a small bag of coins on the ground at his feet and picked it up. After stopping to look at the riches for one last time, he turned and walked back the way he came. The entrance was blocked by the rolling boulder, but luckily Ali Baba had remembered the password. Can you remember it too? That's right, open sesame. The boulder rolled to one side and Ali Baba ran all the way home to tell his wife all about the incredible day he'd had. Keen to find out how much gold he had in the bag, he popped by his brother Kasim's house on the way home. He didn't want to give away his secret, so he simply asked to borrow Kasim's scales. I told you we'd get back to his brother, didn't I? Kasim agreed to lend his brother the scales, but demanded to know why he needed them. Well, of course, Ali Baba couldn't lie to his brother and told him all about the forty thieves and the secret of the cave. 
Well, as you probably guessed, Kasim was very excited by the promise of even more wealth. And once Ali Baba had left for home, he wasted no time. He set off with his donkey in the middle of the night and found the cave his brother had described. At the cave entrance, Kasim read out the magic words that he had written on his hand with charcoal. Open sesame! Kasim couldn't believe his eyes. He had only ever dreamed about the gold, jewels and fine treasures that sparkled and the light of his flickering lamp. He loaded up his donkey and stuffed his own pockets, his bag and even his hat with coins and jewels before making his way out of the cave. There in the lamplight, dreaming of all the things he could buy with his gold, he shed light on his hand to read out the magic words he had written there. But with all the excitement and heat, the words were smudged, and try as he might, he just couldn't remember them. Finally, the boulder moved. That's strange, thought Cassim. I didn't say anything. But the command of open sesame had come from outside the cave. There in front of Cassim were 40 angry thieves, all very surprised to see this strange man and his donkey in their secret hiding place. The thieves grabbed Cassim and dragged him back into the cave. Cassim felt a lump in his throat and a horrible sick feeling in his stomach. These men didn't look friendly, and they weren't. I am afraid that Cassim never left that cave. Those horrible thieves cut him into pieces and left the remains in the cave as a sign to any other strangers that this is what happens to you if you steal from the 40 thieves. A few days later, worried that his brother Kasim was still missing, Ali Baba snuck out and visited the cave. He crept inside and I am sad to say he found what was left of Kasim. He could not stop the tears as he carried his brother home and a large sack in the dead of night. Ali Baba paid a poor blind tailor to sew Kasim back together before he was buried. They held the funeral the same day and told everyone that Kasim had been in a bad accident. No one questioned it, and Ali Baba and his wife Morgiana left for home. Meanwhile, Mustafa, the boss of the 40 thieves, discovered that Kasim's body was missing from the cave. He was worried that someone else had broken in and taken the body. This other person must know the magic words to open the cave. How else would they have got in? News travels fast in a small town, and Mustafa soon hears the story about the blind tailor being asked to sew a body back together. One of the thieves asked the tailor whose house he had visited to undertake this horrible task. And he led him to Ali Baba's house, and the thief marked the door with a white chalk cross. To keep the cave secret, Mustafa would visit in the dead of night and kill whoever lived there. Luckily for Ali Baba, his wife Morgiana was coming back from the market and saw the chalk cross on their front door. It made her worried, and so she drew a white chalk cross on every house in the street. When Mustafa arrived by moonlight, he found all the crosses and returned to the cave, furious with the thief he had sent. Typical, he said. It seems I have to do everything myself, and set off to visit the tailor himself to find out where Ali Baba lived. Later that night, Ali Baba heard a knock on his front door. His wife Morgiana opened it to see the smiling face of a man she didn't recognize. It was Mustafa, the chief of the thieves, pretending to be a wealthy oil merchant. Yes, sir? How can I help you at this late hour? Morgiana asked politely. You are right, my dear, I'm sorry to disturb you, but is the master of the house here? You can talk to me, Morgiana said, stepping forwards. Something about this man didn't seem quite right. Yes, of course. Uh, I'm a lowly traveller passing through. I wish to see Ali Baba. What about? 
said Morgiana, crossing her arms. A good question. Um, his brother, Cassim, is, or was, a good friend, and Cassim said I would be welcome to stay with you any time. Oh, did he now, said Morgiana with a frown. She couldn't put her finger on it, but something just didn't add up. At that moment, Ali Baba came to the door. Who is it, Morgiana? he asked. This gentleman says he was a friend of Cassim. Mustafa took the opportunity to step past Morgiana and into the house. He shook Ali Baba's hand furiously. Sorry for your loss. So good to finally meet you. Cassim told me so much about you. Ali Baba found this hard to believe. Really? he said suspiciously. Oh yes, he spoke of you often. Now please pardon me as I was explaining to your wife. We are in a bit of a pickle. We're stuck, you see, without anywhere to stay for the night. Um, who's we? demanded Morgiana. Mustafa had to think quickly. Oh, uh, how, how silly of me, apologies. It's just me and my horse, but I do have many barrels of precious oil in my cart outside. Ali Baba thought how he might feel if he was travelling alone in the dead of night, then stretched his hand out and replied with a smile. Any friend of Kasim is a friend of ours. You're very welcome. There are many bandits and robbers on the roads out of town. Please stay for the night. I, I would never forgive myself if something happened to you. Mustafa smiled. His plan had worked. Little did Ali Baba know that the barrels on Mustafa's cart contained not oil, but the 39 thieves in his gang. The plan was simple. When the woodcutter and his wife were asleep, the thieves would jump out of their barrels, kill them both, and then take back their gold. No one who knew the secret password could be left alive. Mustafa lay awake in the spare bedroom, thinking of his sweet revenge. No one steals from me and gets away with it. I am the master thief, not some useless woodcutter. Little did he know that Morgiana was listening at the door. I knew it. I knew he wasn't a... Wait, if he's not an oil merchant, then what's in all those barrels? She crept out of the house and heard voices coming from the barrels. She knew she had to do something, so thinking quickly, she untied the horse's reins, slapped it as hard as she could and watched it as it raced off, pulling the cart off down the dusty road. Shouts came from the barrels as one by one, the thieves all careered off the truck and over the cliffs into the valley below. Mustafa heard the commotion and ran out of his room to see the last of his men falling to certain death. Without his gang, he was helpless, and not knowing what else to do, he ran after the cart, desperate to save his horse at least. But I am afraid to say that he slipped and fell right over the cliff edge, and like that, the forty thieves were no more. Ali Baba was the only person left who knew the secret password. And, being a good man, he chose to leave the riches in that cave. He may have visited now and again on birthdays, family holidays, or when the woodcutting business was a little slow. But as far as I know, that treasure is still there. Anyone who knows the secret password would be rich beyond their wildest dream. I'm sure you've forgotten the magic words already, haven't you? Or can you remember? What was it again? Open the end.